is ours. Three, two, one. You are live in this, the ace game decider. That's right, both teams are one all. In the north, you find battling hard in that first game, a one hour, ten minute spectacular. It's Dazara and Rutra as Wehrmacht. That's right, and from the southeast, two players who came back in game number two incredibly well and very efficiently. They are fighting hard for their place in the finals. It is Helping Hands playing as USF and DevM also playing USF. DevM's USF. You name to me a more uh, famous combination of player and faction in Company of Heroes 2. I mean, you may have Loveness, Vermatch, but then quite a few people play Vermatch really well. You may have Nagano's OKW. Again, but no player for me is as ubiquitous with a faction as Dev M, in my opinion. Mainly because he won OCF in when uh, the faction right. first came out, 2015 kind of era, and that was pretty spectacular. Uh, where do you stand on that one, Dan? Well, we have actually Helping Hands as the Brits was a, a very prominent one, I think, for a while. But again, it's like when it comes to um, success in, in tournaments and things like that, I think Dev M's USF is probably one of the most powerful um how fairly he's used ever um usf over the years it <laughs> can be argued it's whether he deserves that or not because we have seen some very strong things come from him we have indeed <laughs> Jeez, yes but um oh yeah, yeah it no, wasn't as successful in gcs of course that's the black name <laughs> on his record but before that it was pretty war paint ocf usf was just reigning supreme and devon was uh, taking all the cash back to the bank he's trying to do the same in this time the biggest cash pool tournament ever in Company Heroes and his teammate is none other than the guy with 7,000 hours probably and counting it's Helping Hands I think it is about 7k uh, he is a streamer of course the most famous streamer for Company Heroes 2 and that goes without saying let's look at this double rifle flank down on that MG poor MG well great synergy you see these two players working together point on point and they're actually sending a great flank around they're going to easily force off these grenadiers at the start and get the decap that cuts off axis fuel at the start of the game great play and what an advantage they're going to get from this it's really really interesting to see especially considering down the first game we cast today was uh helping hands and devm using double soviet maxims now they're going super aggressive flanking I mean, let's get, let's get it straight. It is the map for it, right? Elst Outskirts, WSF. Nice map. It's the map and it's the faction. I mean, USF at the start, very, very strong. And uh, actually, you know, in the loading screen when I was saying <laughs> it's going to be a little one-sided, I think actually USF for me has like a natural advantage over Austin. Um, e even just for the fact that, you know, like the lieutenant tier just counters everything in tier two, uh, bar the AT gun. And uh, I think it actually... Zara and Ritra, I think they're going to struggle here. I really think they're going to have a, a hard game. For those of you that are confused why the faction didn't swap back, this is the ace game decider. It's not a swapping mechanism. It's whoever had victory point control gets to decide faction. So Hans and Devam have chosen to go allies. And look at that choice right now as this Grenadier recoils in terror and runs away. Potential late retreat in his house outside right VP. Got uh, Grenadiers very low. <laughs> Zara, what are you doing? He's never going to get out of this now. Oh, God. That's horrendous. Oh, M1 Garands. With the uh, huge shots in there. I mean, Devon was a similarly late retreat, but the, it's close to his base, and he had control of the situation. I mean, let's check it out in the west. We've got a little engagement flourishing. Pioneers being pushed away. Let's look at the stats, Dan. And uh, clearly showing that uh, Rutra not with many kills there. It wasn't quite what I expected to see. I wanted to see a big disparity. It wasn't quite that clearly cool. showing. <laughs> not much has happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know a lot's happened. It's just unfortunately, it's not more lethality. It's more pushing units away, forcing them see, to this, retreat. This is where having camera control is a curse because you can't check before you say things. <laughs> no, you sound omniscient <laughs> sometimes when you're not on camera. But uh, unfortunately, you yeah. see what I see. I am a. 
I do just want to point out actually something uh, very good about this play so far. We're looking at Zara and Rucha trying to figure out ways to overcome the strong USF start game because of all the infantry and I think they did it very well. They grouped up on the right hand side, they got a lot of infantry and they pushed back uh, with sheer force and I think that's how USF has to be met uh, when they double up in 2v2s is sheer force, put them in a corner and send them back to base. Also another great point is, well that's terrible, that's, that's not terrible, I can't announce my points as another great point. I meant, what a great point <laughs> Dan. Another point is that as USF you have to have constant aggression. You cannot allow your opponent to take control because uh, quite frankly USF without control is a USF that's on the path to defeat. I now see that Devems launching in with his AA half track which should maintain that steady slew of aggression and uh, Helping Hands has his lieutenant out as well so I wouldn't he's about to hit 50 fuel. Wouldn't we see double AA half track? Would you imagine that? Ooh, we're getting uh, there. Oh, is he going to go for it as well? Be exciting if he did. Maybe he isn't. Damn you, Hans! It, w it would be. I mean, I, I don't know. Yes, he is! That Yay! It <laughs> is. Oh, okay. No, I mean, I, I think it's so good because it suppresses infantry at such a good range. Like, not even the Panzer Grenadiers with the Shreks can fire back because it suppresses outside the range they fire. So, actually, as a, as a suppression tool, this should give them so much map control. It's, they're not going to see it coming. They've got a 2-2-2, two, 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 which, quite frankly, is going to get eviscerated. Oh, look at this nice flank by Helping has Two riflemen pushing up the north area there. That's going to catch something off guard. Maybe this MG42. We just don't know quite yet. I think he'll go for strategic cutoffs. I'm, I'm hoping that he does uh, do that because just getting rid of that fuel, stopping uh, access from having... Uh, any fuel income. Do you know what? I think it may... Well, it's not mistimed because he's caught the MG42, but imagine if he timed it for the push away from the AA half track. Not quite there, but the AA half tracks are making their sweet way onto the battlefield, backing up that rear and uh, moving menacingly towards you. Ha! <laughs> 222 pushed the MG42's algorithm away. <laughs> no, <laughs> naughty 222, how rude. Broke up the retreat path. I think Hans was trying to do some body blocking with the rifleman on the retreat for that. And, uh, oh, he's the first AA. A capture point is under need uh, roadside assistance as the AA is going to leave you smattered along the road in various parts. Much like the AA in the UK. Indeed. That was. <laughs> All right, 2222 is coming on the Fiat 400, Fiat Sig. He's going to try and counter the A half track. A half track is facing the wrong way, but here it comes. The rear echelons, do they have bazookas? No, they do not. But we do have two rifle nades, possibly, from the riflemen, so... He's gonna go for it! What's he thinking? Yeah, he's got the snare, and now he wants to finish off with the scout car. It's actually sensible for Devon to stay where he is. Those armor-penetrating shots from the AA half-track will take down the scout car if he's oh, careless. There's another AA half-track as well! What is he reloading for? Always be firing, never reloading! That was the exact wrong time to go into battle with no ammunition. We did see, by the way, during that engagement, Zara popped G43s on his Grenadiers, which were shown to Helping Hands and Dev M. Signaling, of course, Lightning War is the commander selection okay. in this game. And, uh, hope we get to see a Tiger. Wow. Pioneers going down in the west in a ball of flame. Uh, Dev M has lost a rifleman at some point. I certainly didn't catch it. Did you catch it down, maybe? Um, no. Ah, good. <laughs> Neither of us caught it. Maybe he died. Well, all five of them died in a boating accident. There are two seaside resorts on this map. It is possible. Uh, so we'll put it down to that. Rifleman against Grenadiers in the centre. And an AA half track swinging it in their favour. Other AA half tracks going deep behind enemy lines. The 222's coming for them. He puts the handbrake on. Oh, you're not going to get past him when the handbrake's on. Back 40, though. That'll help. Good micro from the AA, actually. And look at this. You've got uh, helping hands coming into. Uh to support the scout car as it tries to chase down Dev M. Oh, oh, double bazooka shots wow. from uh, helping hands there, helping that 222 to an early grave. Pack 40 misses woefully, giving his position away. Grenadiers forcing their way in. Look at that map control, Dan. Yeah, do you know, I, I was expecting this to be honest. I, I do think USF is. Um, 
it can kind of dominate Oster in the early game. And uh, one of the most dangerous things I see right now is actually not the double fuel that's currently being capped by DevM. It's actually the double munitions. I think this is probably uh, the worst case scenario where uh, all this infantry can start getting upgraded. That's going to be a disaster to deal with. It genuinely is. And uh, their mats without, you know, really well upgraded infantry. We have seen G43, so I suppose the point is now. But that means we've got no Talon mines, you know? Munitions is the bottleneck for their mats. People think fuel because, you know, in 4v4, mm. maybe that's the case. But a lot of the time in higher level their mats, it is mostly munitions, especially in the early to mid game. AA Hartrex, let's check on the kills. Got five on this one. Helping Hands' is AA Hartrex also has five kills, so going tit for tat there. Oh, double bazookas again against the 2 to 2. It's got a slow retreat. They've reloaded. Oh, can't quite get in position. <laughs> Grenadier's waiting. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, competing for kills, it's kind of like Legolas and Gimli. You know, when they go into. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking, yeah. actually, it's I've, more I've of got a another! Viable. I've got another! <laughs> I've got seven kills! Well, I've got 75. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a smug. Uh, but man, isn't he? I'm, I'm filtering myself for the, re for the official nature of this stream. He's such a smug man, isn't he, Dan? <laughs> Legolas. <laughs> I always wanted, like, Gimli to just go on a tear and go berserk on all the or orcs, you know. There you go, Ahar tracks forcing away these grenadiers. Brown in automatics. Bursting away. Seriously need to look at uh, Zara and Rich right now. We know that they're capable players, but uh, clearly there is something that they aren't countering here. And the uh, question I think, you know, they've got bazookas there on the echelons to try and deal with the Ahar track, but it is just too mobile. Are they going to put some mines down, which might tip these engagements? A half track could get a kill in the north. Gren's on negative cover. Oh, so close. Meanwhile, Bazooka rear echelons fording the gap, but they're going really aggressive. And DevM may lose a rifleman here. G43s. How did that survive? this slow working up you just see the arcs of the a half tracks constantly moving constantly filtering positions just combing for enemy units working their way through the lines there really isn't anything that Zaramutra can do uh, because they're not able to deal with the infantry I think like not even the AT gun can get in range to counter the AA and uh, you look at the resources there's plus 45 fuel uh, for the allies at the moment hands already on the main oh Huge long range shot by the AA half track. They're taking out the 222 at max range. Wasn't expecting that. And uh, there is nothing they can do seemingly right now. The wanton aggression shown by these two players that have won thousands of dollars in prize pool between them in the past. ESL champion helping hands, Devam, who's won about five major tournaments himself. And they are on. They've been unleashed, Dan. They were looking shaky in that first game with a poor strategic decision making against uh, wanton ISU usage. But in this game, oh, Gren bites the dust. In this game, they have looked unstoppable. I agree. And you also have to factor in as well that um, DevM and Hans uh, have a lot of tournament experience. They can play for hours and hours and hours competitively under high pressure. Don't know that Zara and Richard have the same levels of uh, competitive experience, so they may be very tired uh, oh! going into this game three. Did you see that pack shot as well? The one over the, it whistled over the head of yes, the AA half track. Yes, it was, it yeah, I saw the change in voice. <laughs> I knew when uh, Dan changes a, a semi uh, octave during one of his words, that means he's seen it as well. So we've, we've been <laughs> casting a long time together. Oh, what's this? Oh, actually the MAA1 howitzer. By Scott. Indeed. It's a good unit, Dan. Uh, do you like to use this one yourself? I do, actually, yeah. I think um, they're better in pairs, I think. But uh, nevertheless, one's going to be very good. It is. They're just, you know, they're just trouble. They really are, because you just have to keep moving all the time. And it's uh, it's annoying, and then it actually picks up veterans. So it becomes effective, and then you're like, ah, oh, right. <laughs> Vet 3 Grenadier could die next. Oh, it doesn't even stand a chance. Veteran C3 Browning Automatics and an AA half track. I mean, what chance did it ever have? Might as well have stayed in bed. 
Here comes the Scot. Just giving them a reason to be fearful for the future. I think that really at this stage we have to take into account we haven't seen Axis uh, really make any kind of dominant play or push on any side of the map. Uh, they're struggling to contain their own territory with under 200 VPs in the first 15 minutes. And uh, they are now losing squads deep in enemy territory. They're just not playing together very well, I think, actually, in this third game. Seemingly not. It is a, such a great uh, great strategy unleashed by Helping Hands and DevM here. They, don't, they, they know they've been really bruised and battered in that first game, and they definitely want to get their endurance back, and they want to make quick work of their opponents. And what's... What a great idea to do it in this way. Couldn't they have done this in game one? <laughs> <laughs> I know. But to, to Zara and Richard's credit, like they put on a, a very, very good uh, display in game one. They've showed themselves as, uh, you know, as, as on the same level uh, as Hans and Debem. They, they've got the capability. I think in many ways it's a huge mark of respect to Desara and Rutra that Helping Hands and Devon have had to bring out the big guns. They've had to put on a, uh, you know, a top level tournament winning situation here. They've gone super mm. hyper aggressive and uh, that takes a lot of energy. It's not a simple two versus two strategy to do. They're playing this as though it's a grand final of a one versus one tournament each, you know. Uh, not that one versus one's better or worse, it's just different style of play. It's very aggressive. And uh, they're not even giving them time to bed in or settle in. Not a moment's breath. No, you're right. Here's a mark of respect. Telemine, they're very close to uh, to the AA half track from DevM. In fact, if DevM goes around the left side of that building, he will trigger oh, that. Nice grenade in the north. DevM on the assault. Hands also. These guys have not relented for tele a moment. Talad goes down. I didn't actually make that out. Down where was that? The teller was on the uh, right side um, house, where oh, the okay. dominant house used to be there. That was the uh, A half track. Fair enough, my bad. And, uh, here's that second Scott, by the way. I'm telling you, like, uh, in pairs, these are just they're so difficult to deal with, because the AoE is heightened a little bit, and suddenly they're very strong. That being said... One oh, <laughs> yes, been Fausted needs the A half track to save its life. Ah, and now they're missing horrifically. Dan, please stop talking about how good the Scots are. You're jinxing them. <laughs> they're missing all over the place. They just make things difficult. You know what they I mean? Do. They do. They really do. Sherman is uh, has a nice fray into battle. He's going back to base because there's another Sherman on the way. And uh, they seem to come in twos as well. They always come in twos. Always the master and the apprentice. You know, Brown in automatics, that's superior on the move accuracy. Oh, pack 40 taken down. Grenadier surely to follow. What are you thinking, Rutra? Get out of there, my fellow. And of course, he's going to give away that pack 40, which is the, that 80 gun you really don't want to give a, away when you're playing as Axis. In the north, Vets 2 rifles causing all kinds of problems to these Grenadiers. Oh, God. Grenade thrown. Desara and Rich are showing their fatigue. He can't do soft retreats to grenades anymore. He has to do hard retreats, which means he's, uh, he's you know, not fully on the ball. Oh, Scott! Okay, they are, though. I thought that could be a death, Dan. They were so closely clumped. Look how desperate they are. I mean, currently capping the right VP. They're so overextended. In fact, the flanking opportunities for Hans and Devem to wipe this two vet grenadier squad. Uh, a very high. You know what I've seen today? When Helping Hands and Devon play the exact same strategy, they accentuate all of its strengths. Nice grenade on the retreat path takes out the grenadier. They accentuate its strengths. <laughs> and um, the, <laughs> the Maxims worked great earlier, and now we're seeing WSF with the same heavy cav build. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm. Well, uh, tightrope's analysis is rather brutal. They played too poorly with the two two twos. Interesting. I suppose it wasn't the best display of uh, light armor scout car usage, but uh, Sherman drifting around the battlefield, about to wipe a grenadier. Oh, the other Sherman did it, but regardless, 
That's uh, not a good end. What are they fighting for, Desara and Rutra? They're done. Stick a fork in them. Well, I think they're just fatigued, but um, you know, they're not prepared to surrender. They still want to try and put on uh, the, the best performance that they can. I think that, that can be respected. I'll bite your legs off, said the Black Knight in the Holy Grail. That's very similar to the situation we see before them as this death ball marches in. Heroic display by Zora and Rutscher in game one of the series. Don't forget it. They gave their all against Helping Hands and Death M and you will see them again in the finals. But uh, for now, you're going to be seeing the Helping Hands and Death M show. Victory is ours. Okay then, that was a good one.